Happy Tuesday, everyone. Welcome to the three approaches to achieving to achieve your dating success. I'm your host, Michelle G, and I'm coming to you live from sunny San Diego, San Diego. Excuse me, your relationship and dating guru, where we talk about relationships, dating, matchmaking, anything that has to do with love. Some of you have called me the love coach, love doctor, hey, whatever floats your boat. I'm so excited to spend this time with you today. So dating, oh man, dating is such, um, it's its just, I think about dating and I, I get all lit up, you know, because, you know, I, I'm married, but dating is, is not something that's dead, you know, and it's even more fun when you're like out there and, and you're getting to know people, but here's the thing, you know, there's, there's words that basically mean certain things, okay, and dating it happens to be one of those words where people know that dating means that it's it's permission or the term to be able to flirt with one another. It like gives you full permission to flirt. You know, if you're in the dating scene or if if you're you know dating uh, online dating, that's part of the reason why you know wherever there's dating involved, sometimes people may flirt with you in a way that's a little sleazy. I've heard that a couple of times from clients of mine who have. Um, been on doing online dating and they don't like how the flirting is happening but you know technology has really changed the dating game um, it has changed the dating game from how it used to be from setups to mixers to speed dating um, and now it's online chat rooms online dating texting you know um, and so it's just created an environment that's really comfortable for people who are not as outgoing, who are a little bit more introverted, um, because it allows them to kind of test the waters before they put themselves out there, you know? But, you know, I also think that dating, that, that online dating, or, or the ability to date online and meet people online has made us lazy. You know, because the reason most people choose online dating over anything else is because they're like, oh, you know, I want to be able to have time to, I don't want to go on all these dates and all these mixers with, with all these different people. Um, and so it's like, it's kind of made us a little lazy. Um, and it's also kind of made us lazy on how we approach people. So today I want to share with you my top three strategies on how to be able to set the stage, you know, be smooth as James Bond or Mrs. Bond, if you want to say, um, and flying solo, okay? So wingman, wingwoman, when do we use it? But let's start off really by talking about, um, talking about how technology just has offered a really different perspective for dating, you know? There's been some controversy. Technology has killed courtship. Um, it, others say that it's just redefining romance. What are your thoughts? I would love to know what your thoughts are. Um, do you think it's killed courtship? Do you think it's redefined romance? Do you find it that it's enhanced romance? Has it made, made it easier for you? I want to hear from you. Let me know. Send your, um, send your responses to support at michellegcom and I'll make sure that I'll uh, review them and talk about them, whatever you say, whether you agree or disagree, and bring them up right before we end our show. Um, you know, it, it's, really, it's really interesting to me, you know, let's define approach because technology, you know, people say, well, I do approach people, you know, I text them or I send them an instant message. It's not the same. I'm talking approach. I'm talking about real life connection, interaction, right? All right, so what does approach mean? So the definition for approach is when you speak to someone for the first time, you know, for the first time about something. So, you know, you're going to approach them because you have a proposal or you have some sort of request. It varies. So it's, it's kind of interesting because there are situations where you may say, well, you know what, I kind of had my eye on this person for a while and I work with them, I interact with them, I talk with them. But unfortunately, I don't have, um, you know, I don't have a way of approaching them, you know. Or it may be someone that you have no clue who they are. You just see them from across the room, and you want to be able to just go up to them and strike a conversation. Just be able to kind of get them, get them, 
you know, interested in you and, and be able to talk to you. So I'm going to start talking about my approaches now. I'm so excited to share this with you. So number one, setting the stage. What does that mean? How do you, how do you set the stage and what does the stage mean? Well, whenever you go into any situation, you want to make sure that you're not going in without arming yourself with some great information. And how do you collect that information? You be observant. I'm going to give a couple of scenarios here to kind of um, explain what I'm talking about. You know, setting the stage is really all about being able to strike up the conversation that you're looking for. Being able to approach that person and at least engage them in a conversation immediately to see if there is a chance of moving forward or not. Plain and simple. So, for example, for someone who's in a coffee shop, you know, or, or um, let's talk about a coffee shop first. I'm not, I'm not going to go into the other one. So coffee shop. You know, what's the first thing that you notice from someone that stands out across the room? And don't say it's just attractiveness because, duh, that's like the first thing that makes you attracted to that person, right? You're like, oh, my God, they're, they're cute or, or she's hot or she's beautiful, she's gorgeous or blah, 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 whatever the case may be. But I'm going to ask you to go beyond that. Remember. In order to set the stage, you have to be observant. So I really want you to observe where that person is, the environment there. If you're in a coffee shop, do they have a book? Are they drinking a hot or cold beverage? Um, are they, do they look like they're doing schoolwork? Do they look like they're writing? I mean, look at how you can learn a lot from a person's nonverbal cues and nonverbal body language, OK? And so you want to definitely find two commonalities, like maybe, and be truthful. Maybe they're reading a book that you've read or that you've been interested in reading, okay? That's caught your attention, but you weren't really sure. Um, you know, it could be something along the lines of um, they have a beverage that you notice that says chai and you like chai tea, you know? When you're observant, it gives you, it arms you up to be able to start a conversation, to set that stage, you know, to get ready to go and approach them. I'm going to talk about approaching them in a second. So you really want to be observant. Now, Here's the thing, you know, finding at least two commonalities will make it easier because then you know how you're going to talk to this person. You're going to go and approach them and what you're going to say. Now, don't rehearse everything you're going to say, but you definitely want to at least have some pointers. It's kind of like when you're going to give a speech. You, wanna, you don't want to have a, a card or a note that says, hey, um, you know, this and this is happening. You kind of want to look at it, have some pointers in your head, and then just be yourself, okay? And you're going to be nervous, especially if it's someone that you don't know. Work environment. Now, if you work with someone and they work in a different department and you want to approach them, you know, how do you set that stage? Same thing. You want to be observant. You know, maybe you guys have, have been in the cafeteria at the same time or gone to lunch with the same people. What kind of things do they like to eat? Just, just observe them. And you can strike up, you can use some of that observation to strike up a conversation, okay? And then a bar. A bar, a nightclub, those are some places where people have most success sometimes, if you will, to pick up someone. And I know you can tell my demeanor kind of changed on that because I don't have anything against picking someone up at a bar or at a nightclub, okay, because it's just a different environment. But here's the thing, that just being in that environment, it forces you to really focus on the physical, on the attractive piece. Like, not really see a person when they're just in their element, in their environment. You know, people who go out dancing, like I love dancing, but I'll tell you one thing, I don't look like this. Like my hair is done, I have my earrings on, I mean like I'm dressed to the nines. Do I dress to the nines every day? No, I like to be comfortable, I like to wear my sundresses and, and I think I look beautiful in my own way. But you know, when you go out to a club, it really becomes about just that appearance, that physical attraction. Don't get me wrong, chemistry and physical attraction are imperative, but it's not the first thing you want to approach someone with. You don't want it to be like, oh God, here's the pickup line. You get what I'm saying? All right, so what I would say is that if you meet someone in a bar, I would say to you, ask them out for a coffee date, not a dinner date, not a drink date. Here's why. You want to be able to have, to set the stage to have a conversation. Setting the stage is all about conversation, point blank, all right? 
So that leads me into strategy number two, the James Bond approach. You want to be cool, calm, collective, confident. Here's the thing with confidence, okay? Not allowing yourself to... Confidence is really focused on being truly confident. Not allowing yourself to be have the fake confidence and have it washed away if you are rejected because it happens, okay? That's when you know you really have confidence. When someone says, no, thank you, or I'm not interested, your ego isn't shattered or, or you're not just like, oh, man, you know, you see, I'm not worth it. I, oh, my God, I make such a fool out of myself and have all these negative talks in your head. Look, rejection is a part of life, okay? It comes to us every day in different forms. And it's all about how you choose to deal with it. And also, if you really have confidence and you love yourself enough, okay, it didn't work out. Okay, try again. You know, it shouldn't completely deter you. Now, you know, no small talks. Okay, I, if there's one thing that I tell my clients is if you're going out on a date and a man approaches you, and I'm going to use the, I'm going to use the bar and the club as an example. No small talk. Hi. And they come up to you. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, you know, I, I saw it. Oh, come on. Cut to the chase. Why are you here? Here's the thing. Women are attracted to people who know, who clearly state what it is that they want. So, for example, if you're a man approaching a woman, hi, I saw that you were enjoying a drink here, and I was enjoying a drink, and I think you're by yourself or maybe with some friends. Is it okay if I join you? I would love to share this drink with you and have the opportunity to get to know you. Oh, my God. They know clearly the intention that you're going there and you're approaching them with. It comes off calm. It comes off confident. Okay? And if she doesn't want to, hey, I'm not interested. Thanks, but no thanks. All right? But if you're a woman approaching a man, and by the way, ladies, there's nothing wrong with approaching a man and, and asking him if, if you're interested in him or letting him know there's nothing wrong with that. Okay? It's all about how classy you do it. Everything, as long as you do it with class, it's okay for the most part. Um, if you're a woman and you are attracted to this man and, and you see him from across the room and you would approach him and just say, hi, you know, I saw, same thing, I saw you were enjoying a beverage by yourself. By yourself. Uh, my name is Michelle. Um, I'd love the opportunity to just get to know you a little bit and be able to share this beverage with you. Is that okay? Ask permission, you know, and and you'd be surprised most people would, even if they don't enjoy the conversation that occurs, yeah, they'll say, yeah, sure. Don't start with, hey, how's it going? How are you doing? Had a long day. But come on, man, just get to the point. If there's anything I think most people despise is beating around the bush, all right? All right, so a different environment, a coffee shop, and a gym. You know, use transitions, no small talk, okay? If you approach someone that's sitting down working or that's standing in coffee line, use the approach of, hi, you know, how are you? My name is so-and-so, you know. Um, I see that you're reading this book here, or I see that you're enjoying a chai tea latte. I actually like them too. Or, hey, I saw, I noticed that, you study at this place, are you still there? You know, just, just get to the point. Say, look, I would love the opportunity to sit down and just get to know you better. Just say it off the bat from the beginning, you know? Don't try to have all this small talk and then comes the dull moment. Yeah, yeah, I, I do like this, but thanks for asking. Crickets, crickets. Come on. That's your opportunity to say, look, I'd love the chance to sit down with you and talk to you. Gyms. Oh my God, this is too funny. In a gym, it's not the ideal place to pick someone up, but it's a great place to say, hey, I've seen you here a couple of times. I've seen you worked out. You look like you, you're a fitness enthusiast. Um, would you like to enjoy a smoothie later? Let's, let's enjoy a smoothie and I'd love to get to know you. There you go, no small talk. You told them that you've seen them there a couple of times and now you get into, to get into the conversation. All right, you know? so. All right, and number three, flying solo. So when do you need, um, you know, when do you really need a wingman or wingwoman? Well, number one, for safety reasons, you definitely want a wingman or a wingwoman if you're going to go to a bar, a nightclub, a concert, um, because those places, you know, there's, there's 
bad people out there. And unfortunately, you hear of people who have been assaulted, of people who have been something slipped into their drinks, or sometimes, you know, irresponsible. We do, we irresponsibly drink. You know, we we get into it and we just keep drinking, and and then you don't have anyone there to kind of just look out for you. Um, in those situations and places, I suggest that you do have a wingman or a wingwoman. Um, you know, it's it's just to be safe for safety measures. I would say also um, for mixers, okay? So I don't know if you've ever heard of the term working the room. So it's kind of funny because you think, what do you mean to work the room in a mixer? Well, if you go to a networking meeting or you go to a business meeting where you're kind of, it's you and a partner and you're there to kind of get to know some people, make some introductions, very like a business transaction, very like both of you attacking the room from the same, uh, you know, with the same intent, with the same purpose, right? Well, when you take a wingman or a wingwoman with you to a mixer, and both of you are single, that's the, that's the big thing here, is you want to have someone who's in the same marital status as you. Single, divorced, because then, you know, someone can meet another person there, and they can say, hey, you know, I'm with my friend, you know, blah, blah, do you have a friend that we can, you know, someone that she can meet that would get along? Or sometimes you may not meet someone great, you know, and your one friend you know, actually found someone that's great and you're kind of like, oh man, it uh, didn't work out for me. It's okay, be happy for them. Just go and have fun, you know. You never know. You may meet someone who can be an amazing friend and just build an amazing friendship from there forth. Um, so anyways, I would say mixers would be a good one to take a wingman and a wingwoman, you know, and talk about... <laughs> Don't go in there and just say, oh, my God, we're just going to go after these guys. No. Or we're just going to go after these girls. No. Talk about it. Like, all right, you know, we're going to go. You know, we're going to approach some different people. And, you know, I'm here with my friend and, and introduce one another to other people and just broaden the circle, okay? Work. This is a very important place where you do want to have a wingman and a wingwoman. And it all goes back and ties into being able to set the stage. And here's why. When you have a wingman or a wingwoman that's at work and you're interested in someone who's in a different department or maybe works with you directly, it's good to kind of, you know, usually there's a friend who knows everything that's going on, who knows, you know, oh, you know, yeah, so-and-so just had this happen or they're like this. I mean, there's always a friend that you have that you can kind of trust and talk to. And having that wingwoman at work or wingman at work can really help you kind of set the stage because they're also observers for you, especially if they know that you're really interested in someone. They can be one of your ambassadors and help you out to, to maybe just give you a confidence boost or just kind of be like your support. Like if you get rejected, they're there for you. I mean, there's, there's definitely um, times where I would say, hey, if you have someone at work that you're interested in, have a wingman or a wingwoman. You know, it makes it a lot easier. You can kind of get a feel for the person. Um, on dates, you know, I am a proponent of double dating, but not in the beginning. Anything before the fifth date, I would say don't do double dating yet. Just because kind of by the third or fourth date, you really know if this is something that you're going to keep casually dating or if you're actually going to start dating, you know, like just, nah, they're good. it's a relationship or nah, you know, it was nice. I had a good time, but let's keep moving forward, you know. So I hope that, um, that you have just gotten so much out of this. And if you have any questions, you know, I'm about to take some questions. because I've had some questions come in even before the live hangout. And I'm so excited to answer these and share these with you. Um, I want to go ahead and get to the questions right now. So we have one from um, Hopeless Romantic. Hi, Michelle. I'm a huge fan of your weekly broadcast. Keep up the great work. Thank you. So I'm really torn at what I should do. There's a girl that I have been absolutely, that I have absolutely such a great friendship with, and it's literally indescribable. She's a great person, and when we talk, it feels like I can do anything. The problem is that these feelings over the past few weeks have emerged to, much, to something much more. I feel like I'm truly falling in love with this person, and I would love to be with this person more than anything, but circumstances prevent such things from occurring. Should I tell her how I truly feel or risk losing her as a friend? Or should I just keep it to myself and continue to act normal? 
Any advice would be great, greatly appreciated. Thanks for your help. Hopeless Romantic. Well, Hopeless Romantic, if you're out there listening, um, I first want to say to you, thanks for the compliments. That was very nice of you. Um, you know, this is a this is this is one of those things where I would have to ask you the question, how much do you value that friendship? Um, you mentioned here that they're in circumstances that prevent it from you being with her or you approaching her um, or him. I, I don't know if you're a boy or girl, but you know what I mean? I would ask you, how much do you value that, that friendship, first off, and how much do you respect that person? Because what you don't want to do is put them in a predicament where it's going to make it uncomfortable, where it's going to change the dynamics of your friendship. Um, maybe one of the best things you could do is little by little start removing yourself and separating yourself and and look for and start dating and find someone and then when your your feelings have have subsided for this person for your friends then maybe you can reapproach it and just approach it from a friendship level you know because you have someone in your life and and if sometimes when you have a friend who's always there for you and their intentions are just to be your true friend just solely be your friend but sometimes because on the shoes, you know, different or the circumstances so different on the other side, where you're by yourself, or or you're going through a breakup, or you just went through a breakup, it makes you so much more vulnerable, you know, to because we, you know, we're hurt and we just want to cling on to something that that you know is is really not what a friend may be trying to to show you, you know. I would have to ask you just to really think about that. Um, that's really up to you, you know. You could jeopardize the friendship by not, by actually just saying what it is that you feel, because you may put that person in a really awkward situation, and I'm sure your intention is not to do that. So I really hope that I've answered your question, Hopeless Romantic. If you have any other, please feel free to email at support at michellegcom And I'm going for another question. Um, I always feel like I'm not a guy's, at a guy's level or hot enough for him to be interested, but I know this is holding me back. Any tips? Shy but looking to change. Wow, so confidence. I mean, this all boils down to confidence and and loving yourself. So some tips that I would have for you is I would definitely um, recommend for you to do things that make you feel good about yourself. Wear clothes that make you feel good about yourself. Treat yourself to different things. Um, and honestly, it's not about you being at a guy's level or being hot enough for this guy. It's really about you and how you view yourself because people pick up on that. Men pick up on that. A man can tell when a woman's confident and where she's just faking it, you know? And you don't want to, to put that out there. You don't want to be, you know, faking it until you make it. You really want to be a part of, you want to come from that place of, like, I know what I bring to the table. You know, and if you really need to see it on paper, I would say write, get a piece of paper and write down everything that you have to bring to a relationship. I'm sweet. I'm caring. I'm loving. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a great friend. I'm, a, I'm a good listener. I'm a good talker. I hold conversations. I'm, in, I'm intellectually um, stimulating. Um, I'm smart. I read. You know, I crochet. I'm artistic. Like. There's all these things that we don't take the time to recognize about ourselves. But when you see it on paper, when it's there in front of you, black and white, it can really help you say, you know what? It's not about being at a guy's level. I know what I bring to the table. How about if I tell you this? That guy is not at your level. Okay? And also, I would say, if you're shy, you know, sometimes because you may be shy when you're trying to approach someone and tell them that you're interested, it kind of comes off as like, you're clumsy and you're nervous. So again, I would say take time to really figure out what point it is and what you want to talk about when you approach this person. All right? So uh, that was for you, shy but looking to change. And our next question, and this is our last question, folks, because um, we're running short on time. But if you do send a question after, don't worry. I promise I'll get back to you. Um, this is from Ocean Baby Doll. My friend has a boyfriend, and she's scared that she might get hurt again. She's been married three times, and all three times it's been bad marriages. 
you know, the other day, by mistake, she found a set of wedding bands and an engagement ring, you know, and she found it before he left to Vegas. Now, she's known the guy for 10 years, but she's so afraid to be hurt again. He treats her like a princess, and he's just a great person, and, and he does all kinds of things for her. You know, how is it that I could go about um, being able to allow myself to not let this prevent me from really, really having this love that that I think we could have. I would really appreciate any words, and um, please let me know what it is I can do to break through this barrier from Ocean Baby Doll. Well, Ocean Baby Doll, if you're out there listening, my heart goes out to you. Um, I can understand and I can really see why it is that if you've had a history, like you've had things that reinforce that you're going to continuously get hurt, you're going to get scared and you're just going to be like really kind of walking on eggshells and not trying to be part of a, a committed relationship or you don't know if you should trust again. There's all these things that happen when you have continuous um, things that just reinforce that, experiences and patterns that continue to show up. So here's the thing. If you've been with this gentleman for 10 years and you know him and he treats you well, um, and up until this point, he's never disrespected you. He's never done anything that has caused you to doubt what you mean to him. Then I'm going to say this. Open your heart. Allow yourself to experience this love fully, completely, and whole. Because here's the thing. What's going to happen is going to happen. And if you continue to try to control the situation, what you may be doing is pushing him away further. Okay, you may you may push the relationship away, and then nobody likes to be pushed away, and and then he may just completely shut off or shut down. I mean, if he hasn't shut off or shut down, and he understands where you're coming from, then before if he is going to ask you to marry him and everything, or and and propose and all these things, and before all this takes place, it's really really important that you have a conversation with him about this, that this is a problem, like you have a hard time trusting yourself, trusting your judgment to see if this is the right step moving forward or you're afraid to fully give yourself to a relationship because of your experiences, but talk about it with him. It does you no good to just keep it inside because all that does is that it keeps churning in your head and then you start making assumptions and you start thinking of things and it just goes down this entire rabbit hole when you can save all that heartache, all that stress, and have this conversation with him. And ask him, not necessarily are you going to propose to me, but where do you see our future going? Because I want to be completely honest with you that I'm still working on being able to get over all these things and, and, and be able to allow myself to love fully again. So Ocean Baby Doll, I would invite you and give you full permission to have this conversation with him. Um, he seems like a, a nice man since, from what I'm understanding, you guys have been together for a long time. Um, but it really, it has to do with you. You have to be willing to have that conversation with him, see how he, he responds to it, and really take it from there. That's the first step in breaking that barrier. So secondly, what I want to offer too is, for those of you who don't know, my birthday is tomorrow. Yay! <laughs> I'm going to be 32. So... I'm super excited. It's uh, I know it's throughout the you know a weekday, but who cares? But because uh, it's my birthday, I want to give a gift to you. So the first person who sends an email to support at michelleg.com and tells me what it is that they loved about this episode or what was the one takeaway that they got is going to get a gift from me. And the gift from me is you're going to get three one hour sessions with me and we're going to tackle your number one relationship challenge or your dating challenge or something that has to do with with your your confidence or you, something you want to work on okay it has to do with with relationship with yourself with your significant other so the first person to email me is going to be the winner and so email me right now at support at michellegcom and I will get back to you with who the winner is so I just want to thank you again for this time. I hope you have a phenomenal week. And until next time, I want to remind you that every day is a new day to reignite your relationship. And remember, it always starts 
with you. Take care. Ciao.